Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today's gonna be a very different video. I've never done this on my channel before, um, but I'm gonna make a card uh, using some of the goodies from the Free Spirit Planners Anonymous box. Um, if you saw my weekly decoration on Monday, you'll know that on Saturday, it's one of my very, very good friend's birthdays, um, and I wanted to make her a card. It's also my sister's birthday on the day after, but I've already sent her presents, so she doesn't get a card made this time. Uh, but my very good friend Chelsea deserves a card, so I'm going to make her one. So what I'm going to start off with is this piece of cardstock. It is textured cardstock um, from, I think I bought this from Kmart or the reject shop. I don't remember. Um, but it's just a basic piece of cardstock and any normal cardstock will do. I'm just trying to find where I put my lead pencil and I can't find it. What did I do with all my pencils? Where lead pencils are like gold in my house, they disappear like there's no tomorrow. So I want to make it ten and a half centimeters wide. I'm basically using this card from Kiki K as a bit of a template because that's the size I want. So it's going to be ten and a half centimeters wide by fifteen centimeters high. So I'm just going to mark that out with the height first, and then I'll do the width afterwards because obviously I need to double it. I'm just putting that. There. I'm also going to do it on this side just so I've got stuff to line it up with because I'm still not 100% confident with my paper trimmer but I'm getting there. So I'm just going to line those up. I'm not going to draw the line but I just want to make sure that it's on the edge. Okay. So then noisily grabbing my paper trimmer. I uh, will be doing a review of this on Friday, so stay tuned for that if you are interested. We'll put this in here. Make sure that's solidly on the bottom there. I'm still so scared of this plant, of this trimmer. It just sometimes, no matter how hard I try, the line doesn't come straight, and it's just going to annoy me if it does it today. That it doesn't go straight. Just doesn't, it's really frustrating. Because see, I can see that and it's not oh, maybe just straight. Maybe my maybe my measurement's not straight. We'll soon find out when we fold it over anyway. So when I'm making cards, what I like to do is oh, yuck, that line is awful. I'll fix it. I'll fix it when I cut it. So I'm just making sure this is the right piece. So uh, maybe that one. I basically cut it straight down the middle, so it doesn't really matter. I can use either one. I can use that one. So I'm gonna then just measure out where my ten and a half is. Now my trimmer does have a scorer on it, and I will use it because I feel like I kind of need to keep the practice. So. We'll roll that round to the trim, the trim, the score. We'll line that up. And then fold it over. This is where we're going to find out if it's straight. Yeah, it's not. I didn't think it was. It's alright, I'll fix that up with my other trimmer. So I'll put that one away. Get out my Fiskars one. So the bottom line is straight, it's just that top one that's not. So we'll fix that up when we cut the excess off. So we'll put that in. Cut down. That's not straight either, but I'll fix that too. This is the problem with getting new trimmers. They're just a little bit, they just take a little bit of warming in sometimes and I don't know if it's just because I'm so used to mine or, or what it is but I'm I love my Fiskars one and I love my car one and this new We Are Memories Keepers one's just taking a while to warm in. So this is obviously going to make this card just a little bit smaller which I'm not too worried about. It didn't have to be that size it was just where I was sort of aiming at it. Just making sure that's folded right. And now she's perfect. Hooray! 
So we've ended up with a card that is 10.4 by 14.3. So, so it looks really, really, it's a good size. So then what I'm gonna do is grab this piece of cardboard from the um, Planners Anonymous box. And what I wanna do is make it so this bit on the front here with the Mandela is what's there. So I do wanna just cut it just a little bit smaller. So I'm just double checking my measurements here. So I'm gonna make it 10 centimeters across and I'm making sure that I get the edge that I want. problem with this is I've got to then find where I put my marks because that is such a beautiful piece of colour cardboard that you can't really see it. I know I'm being really pedantic with this but I'm really scared when it comes to cards and especially when it's such a good friend I want to make sure that it's as perfect as it possibly can be. Just noticed a fuzzy bit. And I find that sight's sometimes the easiest way to do this. So if you're never ever not sure, pull it out, have a look at it and see what where it is. And then you can sort of play with it. I'm just gonna measure like line where that line is so that I know exactly how long it is. And then I'm just gonna give it just a little bit. And that should, I hope, be perfect. And it is. I just love that Mandela. Isn't it just gorgeous? I just yeah, love it. So I'm just going to stick that down using glue tape that has dog hair. And actually, I think that might be Ashley hair. I'll take that back. Sorry, Jen. I mulch too, so it's, oh well. Not, it's not okay when I do it, but can't get mad at Jet when it's me. You could obviously do it that way if you wanted to have a, a horizontal card instead of a vertical card but I like the vertical at the moment. So just sticking that down. There we go. Alright so that's the basis of the card. Now obviously this is going to be a birthday card um, but I don't actually have anything that says happy birthday. And that sounds ridiculous because of the thousands and thousands of stamps that I have, none of them say happy birthday. I don't think, hold on. No, none of them say happy birthday. And you could then stamp it out if you wanted to, but I just, I almost don't want to put a happy birthday on there at all, on the front, and I'll just put it um, in the middle of the card. And then for that one, I think I'm going to use this sticker book from Kayser Craft. So in here there's heaps and heaps and heaps of birthday ones. I do have another one which I might toss up in a second. So there is a happy birthday in here somewhere. Where is it? Come on. There we go. It's this little one here, which I think maybe is too simple. The other choice is out of the Live Bright sticker book. Um, which I'm always just a little bit careful with because I know I've only got one of them. But I'm really, I never use birthday ones. And I'm thinking maybe using this happy birthday lovely one instead. Or even one of these happy birthdays. And then that brings in a pink. As opposed to... Oh, it's so hard. I might just, I will use this happy birthday lovely one. I'll flip that all shut. So I'm going to put that in the middle. Actually, just having a thought that it might look really nice mounted on there. So I'm just going to put it on this piece of cardboard or this piece of paper. Making sure it's straight. And I am being really, really pedantic with this this time because I'm just so wanting it to be perfect for Chelsea. And then just going to cut that out. That just brings just a little pop. I think it looks much nicer. So just sticking that down as well. 
Okay, so I need to go back to the front because we need to put something else on here. And I have my stamps here and I have my um, die cut. So I'm just sort of going to have a look and see what looks nice. I'm happy to give this a little bit of dimension if I want to. And what I mean by that is I might use some um, foam tape just to raise it up and give it a little bit. going to use a little bit of foam tape so I just got to grab that out of my drawer. So this is just Express It foam tape that I bought from Spotlight, nothing particularly special. Um, so I'm just grabbing a little bit off here. I'm just going to move this over. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit down the bottom and then a little bit on the top and that'll kind of even it out because you don't want it to look like it's only raised in one section. Then you just take the backing off. And then you just place that where you want it. Oh, that looks so nice. So nice. And then it just needs something in the top corner. And I'm not sure if I want to put that or if I want to put a sticker. I know it's a birthday card, but you don't have to have a birthday card that says happy birthday on the outside and I'm not worried about going over I kind of like cards that do something different so don't stay on the card you can actually kind of give it a bit um, so because I'm not putting this on the card like as in it's not all sitting straight on the card I just want to be careful where I put my glue so I'm almost going to use not enough glue as opposed to using too much and the other good thing is because you're making your own envelope which I'm also going to show you how to do that's going to mean that you can actually make it slightly bigger to fit that in that just looks so good then on the back because I always like to put something on the back I'm not a I can't just leave things I do want to use one of these stamps so I'm just going to grab these out. I just want to grab the bunting. I'm just going to have it sit just there. I'm going to do it in black. I'm just grabbing just a piece of scrap paper because I just always like to test it first and especially when it's the first time I've used it I just really want to make sure that it's going to look good so there's a little bit of a defect with this which is fine because I can draw it back in again um, all it is is one of the bunting bits is missing a little which is fine it's no big deal I think I only notice it because I'm looking for a problem so I'm just inking the crap out of this I'm going to put that piece of paper down underneath Actually, there's a couple of pieces of paper there, so I'm just going to grab one. I'm just going to put it underneath the card just to make sure that if I miss, I'm not going to put it on my desk. I will put so I stick it down the bottom. So I'm just grabbing the box. I got out what I thought I needed, but apparently I need more. So just grabbing the little sticker kit if I can find it. I want to grab something to put in that bottom corner. And what I want to just stick, or just right in the corner here, is just made with the, oh, hold on. No, I don't. I'm going to grab this stamp here that says make your own happy. And I just want to put that up the top. Okay, so that's all done. So that's our beautiful, beautiful card. I love that that sticks out. I think it looks gorgeous. So what I'm going to do now is make the envelope for it. So I'm using my um, one, two, three punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. So all I need to do first is find myself a piece of paper because I didn't think of that. So I'm just going to find myself some paper and I'll be right back. So I've just grabbed this piece of paper from my Aldi paper stack that I got a little while ago. This is the vintage range. 
Um, the reason I like using these for envelopes is that they're one-sided, so I don't feel like I'm wasting another piece of paper on the back when making an envelope. So I'm just gonna cut off the perforation there. And then all we're gonna do is follow the instructions on the board. So when you open this up, it's got a sticker here that has all of your punch guides. So all you do is you measure how big your card is. So in this case, it's 14.2 by, oh, hold on. I've got to remember to give it a bit more at the top. So I'm gonna go 15 and a half by 11. So obviously it's not gonna fit perfectly there. So I have a look here to see if I've got anything that's close. I've got 15.2 by 11.4, which is just not quite big enough. And I've got 11.4 by 18, so that's too big. So then what I do, if nothing here fits, I grab my phone and I have an app, which sounds really weird, but I have an app for this. I just gotta find it, there it is. So it's the envelope generator app. I will link it down below if I can find it. So then I just need to put your card width in here. So you put it onto centimeters. Um, if you are in the States, you can use inches, obviously. So we want the long edge first. So that was 15. And then you go generate and it'll tell you exactly what your measurements need to be. So I need a piece of paper that's 22 centimeters squared. So we move that off, we get in this piece of paper again. This is why I like to use scrapbook paper because it just, it's always got enough room for me to play with. So I'm just measuring out my 22. And then we're gonna persist with the We Are Memory Keepers because I just need to learn how to use it. So I'm going to learn how to use it. So I'm just, Spinning this background to the cutter. So just putting that off to the side and then just measuring the 22 on this side as well. All right. I'm slowly starting to work this out. Maybe I need to hold it a little bit closer. So I didn't do a really good job there because I freaked out. So I'm just trimming that a little to finish her off. So then once we've got our square, and I think that's, I think that's square. If you really want to check, the best way to do it is just to grab one of your um, square boards or your table protectors or mats or whatever. So I'm just going to grab mine out just really quick. So this is just my cutting mat, and then I just put it here. Ryan's just fixing everything that he knocked off there. It's not quite square. I'm looking at it and it's just a little bit off, but it's not off enough for me to panic about. So I'm going to go with it. Put the mat off to the side again. And then what my app is telling me that my punch guide measurement is at 9.4 centimeters. So what I do, you line this up, to 9.4, so 9.4. Now I use my little Fiskars score tool as opposed to using the score tool that comes with this. I just feel like this gives me a better score line, so I just like to use this instead. So once you've got that lined up, you just punch, and then what you do, and I need to make this, I need to put the extender out. So you put the extender out there, I think, and I always make sure I check this, score line A, so you want this one, so you just put that all the way in and score that line. There you go, and then once that's done you roll it around, line that one up with this line on the other side, and punch again, and just repeat the whole way around. Um, if you do want to round your corners off, now's the best time to do that. So because I do, I'll just flip all this back up again and spin it around. So you've got your corner rounder on this sort of corner here. So just put your edges in and push and that'll round your corners off. 
not something you have to do, but I just feel like it makes a much nicer looking envelope. You do have to put a bit of force behind that as well, which is why it looks like I'm physically pushing myself out of my chair. So once that's all done, you just have to fold it up. So you just fold it along the score lines all the way around. And then it's completely up to you which end opens. So if you want to do a traditional envelope, I just noticed just a little bit of not nice cutting there, so I'm just going to fix that up. If you want just a traditional envelope, you can obviously do that, just like that one. If you want to do, sorry, like that one. Um, if you want to do an opening at the top envelope, you can do that as well. I think for this one, I'm going to do an opening at the top, and then I'm going to play with the play with the how it closes. So I'm just making sure that, that sits nicely. I want to do that on the top. Yes, I do. So I'm just going to fold that all down, make sure it's right, and then I'm going to stick it. So the easiest way to do that, just grab some glue tape and just do the corner. I'm going to just do the corner here as well, so that way you get the glue at both ends something I've thought of before I continue any further just make sure your card fits yeah. so obviously we made this a little bit too big so that's good it's gonna fit in nicely they'll sit really well there so that's perfect so then we're gonna stick the bottom down and you can put a lot more glue on the bottom if you know where your edge is so making sure that's all glued up And then your top is just going to fold down like that. And then you can stick a label on the front or you can just write straight on it, whatever you want to do. Um, I am noticing that's not quite perfectly straight, but I'm living with it. No one else is going to notice but me, so I'm not particularly worried. Um, if you do want to decorate the front or the back, obviously just be a little bit careful um, putting anything on the top corner because that's where your stamp needs to go and just be prepared to not quite have everything be right. Um, as in, you can't always have your decorations on the front if it's gonna cause issues, but things like that are generally okay. I've just rambled. You can easily stick things like that down and that'll look really pretty and do the same thing on the back. So that is how I've used the Free Spirit Kit to make myself a card. I do love making cards, it's not something I do all the time, but um, for special occasions and when I can't find another card, um, I'll often use, just make them up myself. Obviously you can make them using anything you've got handy. If you do have these Planners Anonymous kits, you've got everything you're ever going to need to make one. Um, if you don't, if you've just got scraps around the house, it's so easy just to put something so pretty together very, very quickly. So have a go at it, see what you make. Um, you might be surprised by how talented your card making skills actually are. So that's all for today's video guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't already, please subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos. If you do want to see more card making videos, let me know down below or on any of my social medias. Um, like I said, it's not something I do all the time, but I'm quite open to doing it a little bit more often. Hope you guys have an absolutely awesome, awesome day and I will see you again really, really soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.